you should expect, when, if you come to a biopsy, not to like it. It's, um, as I explained to patients, it's unpleasant, but it's not painful. Uh, I have had one done, it was unpleasant, but it wasn't painful. I didn't like it either. Um, because in the country, I would say on the order of 80 to 90% of prostate biopsies are done under local anesthesia. So when you go into the urologist's office, <clears throat> you're put on your side, usually left side down, with your knees bent, and a probe called an ultrasound probe is inserted gently into the rectum. Um, this is, probe allows us to image the prostate. It's kind of like sonar or radar. You can get a sound image of the prostate, which is absolutely uh, outlines it perfectly. We then inject local anesthesia around the prostate to numb it up and then take uh, a number of what we call cores of tissue. These are just small pieces of the prostate tissue. Again, it doesn't hurt. Um, but, uh, you know, it's just unpleasant having this probe move around your bottom. Sometimes we'll do what's called a fusion biopsy um, because we do a lot of MRIs now to see if we can find an area suspicious for cancer. You see, the ultrasound's a terrific way to do the biopsy. It takes just a few minutes to get it done. MRI's a better way to see areas highly suspicious for cancer. It's not guaranteed. In other words, if the MRI says there's a high area of suspicion, it doesn't mean there's cancer. We still have to biopsy. But what I can do with our technology is take the MRI image and fuse it with the ultrasound image. That's why it's called a fusion biopsy. So now I can see what the radiologist sees on the MRI. You might ask, well, why don't we just do the biopsy in the MRI chamber? Well, again, the chamber, as you remember, is a bit like a torpedo tube. You're the torpedo. And it, uh, it takes about 45 minutes just to get a couple of cores when doing it under a MRI guided. So easiest way is just to fuse the two images and, uh, and do it ultrasonographically. Uh, like any procedure, there are potential risks. Um, the, the most important risk that we worry about, which is low, is the possibility of infection because we're going through the rectum. Um, the, we start men on antibiotics the night before and give them a shot of antibiotics just before the biopsy. And this is very effective, but still, depending on where you are, uh, the incidence of getting an infection is 1 or 2 percent. Here, in my hands, we're running around 1 percent. And so I always tell men that if they get a fever of 100 degrees or higher, you go to the nearest emergency room, they'll call me and I'll tell them what to do. You can also see uh, some blood in your urine and stool. Again, as you might expect, we're putting holes in the prostate and we're going through the rectal wall, so you can get bleeding. Uh, it's usually inconsequential. You will also read that there are something called perineal biopsies of the prostate. That means going th avoiding the rectum, going through the skin under the scrotum. Um, again, it's still uh, under local anesthesia. Um, often that's done under uh, uh, IV sedation, but it, it, uh, it, it's a, just another way to approach the prostate. Risk of infection is a bit lower, uh, but um, uh, it's, uh, it's not that popular yet in the country. I, Again, by far, most uh, biopsies are done uh, transrectally. Men also may be sexually active. I encourage they wait a few days, but if and when they're sexually active, the first couple of times that they have an ejaculation, the seminal fluid can look like chocolate sauce or brown sauce uh, because of the blood in the prostate. Really, the primary way to get it out is have more ejaculations. So I always encourage them to self-stimulate so they don't scare their partner. Even after that, there can be small amounts of blood uh, for as long as a month, again, depending on how often men have ejaculations. Uh, it is not a bad thing. It doesn't hurt anybody, but uh, it's just something to be aware of.